Well, that was very pretty. Replay this clip, viewers, and see if you can spot the inaccuracy. Give up? It was the DNA. The presence of histones indicate that it was beginning the prophase stage of mitosis. Transcription doesn't happen while the DNA is wrapping itself into a chromosome. Anyway, all this shows is that modern cells are complex. As I said before, scientists think that life began much simpler than that. I'm finally just beginning to grasp the complexity of the cell. Are there systems within the cell that go well beyond Darwinian evolution? Well, beyond Darwin is really neither here nor there. Darwin didn't know about mutation, so technically that would be beyond him. It's not beyond science, nor beyond the theory of evolution. This theory has simply risen above the awareness of its thinker. What we are finding is that there's information that's in the cell that cannot be accounted for in terms of these undirected material causes. So there's, it has to be. And so there's, there's yeah. some, some other, so there has to be an information source. Remember that experiment we did with the dice? Yep, the source of the die rolls was chance. We selected good rolls, allowed those rolls to accumulate. Nature selects creatures with good mutations by virtue of the fact that they die less. They tend to have more kids first. Well, uh, Darwin assumed that the increase in information comes from natural selection. But natural selection reduces genetic information, and we know this from all the genetic population studies that we have. No. What? Cite your sources, please. Natural selection is the engine. It selects good information. Mutation generates information, be it good, bad, or nonsensical. Only when the two are combined can good information be generated. I mean, we need engineering principles to understand these systems. I'm an engineering major. I can clearly see how each molecule works. However, I also realize how evolution works. What's more, as an engineer, I can easily notice the flaws and show how, were I designing it, I could have made it better. Essentially, if it were designed, it wasn't done so very intelligently. You've got two possible hypotheses. You've got a wall through the middle of your, through your brain, in effect, through your thinking. You say, well, you can't consider anything on this side of the wall. Only hypotheses on this side of the wall are permissible for consideration. What about academic freedom? I mean, can't we just talk about this? They, their reply is that science is not a democratic process. Correct. Truth can't be democratic. If science is a means to seek truth in our universe, how could it ever be subject to opinion? The wall you speak of is the dichotomy between pseudoscience and hypothesis. The difference is hypothesis makes testable predictions, whereas pseudoscience is simply a matter of faith. Science conducts tests, thus it can only consider testable claims. If ID has no testable predictions, it's not science. If Darwin wanted to challenge the consensus today, how would he do it? Science isn't a hobby for rich aristocrats anymore. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And if you want a piece of the pie, you've got to be a good comrade. Scientific ideas. How we get them to you, the people. Bad analogy. I can see here an evolutionist conspiracy straw man brewing, so let me break it down now. The scientific community doesn't care about the results of your study. All they care about is that it obeys the rules of science. This is not a manifesto of necessary beliefs. It is simply the scientific method. The scientific method in 10 easy commandments. Commandment 1. When explaining what thou seest, and thou makest an explanation for this phenomena, thou shalt makest predictions based on this explanation. Commandment 2. Thou shalt see if thy predictions are true with a repeatable test. Thou must repeat it a couple of times, just to be sure. Commandment 3. If thy predictions are wrong, so is thine explanation. Tryeth a new one. Commandment 4. If thou findest an explanation that works, publish that some bitch so others may test thy explanation for themselves. Commandment 5. 
If someone finds a problem with thine explanation, thou must accounteth for that problem, demonstrateth through test that the problem doesn't really exist, or findeth another explanation. Commandment 6. When doing thy tests, thou shalt not fabricate data. Commandment 7. Thou shalt not claim someone else's explanation as thine own. That's fucking weak. Commandment 8. If someone else giveth you an explanation, testeth it. Commandment 9. If thou thinkest there is a problem with an explanation, do not remain silent about it. Commandment 10. Until an explanation is found for something thou seest, don't make shit up. If thou hast no explanation, thou knowest not. Every idea must be inspected to ensure that it is safe. All theories must pass through a series of checkpoints. First, the Academy. Fear the evil conspiracy of evolution. Honestly, the scientific method demands the scrutiny of peer review. Evolution has survived the skepticism of many prominent scientists. The same cannot be said for intelligent design, also known as creation science, as I've proven earlier. Getting a controversial theory through the academy can be dangerous. Few people know this better than Congressman Mark Souter. He uncovered a targeted campaign led by individuals within the Smithsonian and the National Center for Science Education to destroy Dr. Sternberg's credibility. But wait, didn't Sternberg get fired for pretending people reviewed a fundamentally flawed paper in order to misrepresent science to advance the agenda of a religious organization? Souter isn't the only one who has witnessed the Academy's tactics. Journalist Larry Witham has seen similar behavior during his 25 years of covering the evolution I controversy. I interviewed dozens and dozens of scientists, and uh, when they're amongst each other or talking to a journalist who they trust, uh, they'll speak about, um, you know, it's, it's incredibly complex, or molecular biology is in a crisis, but publicly they can't say that. Molecular biology is not in crisis. Take it from someone who reads some peer-reviewed journals from time to time. It certainly is complex. However, this journalist is committing an appeal to authority. He states that because scientists really trust journalists, they'll tell them evolution is in trouble. Consider, if scientists didn't want this stuff to become public, why in hell would they trust a journalist who makes a living on making these things public. Keeping a keen eye on the Academy are various watchdog organizations. Listen to Eugenie Scott of the National Center for Science Education. The NCSE has been at the heart of virtually every evolution controversy over the past 25 years, vigorously defending the Darwinian gospel. Undoubtedly, it is his lack of familiarity with the scientific method that leads Ben Stein to equate a scientific theory with religion. For the record, the Science Foundation has been at the center of each controversy because it's dedicated to keeping junk out of the science classroom.